Good morning, everyone, and welcome to yet another virtual Creative Mornings Munich session. My name is Katja Giri. I'm the host of Creative Mornings Munich, and I'm truly excited to see so many of you tune in this morning to enjoy an amazing talk by Kilty on the topic of insecure. But before we go into this, I would first of all want to say that I truly hope you got yourself some coffee, like I did, uh, so that you can truly enjoy the talk in the spirit of Creative Mornings. And I would like to say a few words about Creative Mornings as such for those who may be tuning in for the first time so far and don't know the concept yet. So Creative Mornings is a global concept, an idea that has uh, appeared, that has arised uh, over 10 years ago in New York, where people gathered once for an inspiring talk uh, in the morning around some coffee, free coffee and breakfast. And this lecture and inspiring creative discussion and talk was so well received that so many people said oh my god we want to bring these to our own chapters our own cities and make this a global concept munich is uh, one of over 200 chapters around the world and of course adapting to the current situation we're doing our sessions online but hopefully in the near future we may be able to gather around some coffee and breakfast together again um, I would like to say big thanks to our global sponsors um, who are making sure that we can keep going with the events and that they are possible. So first of all, I'm saying thanks to MailChimp who has been with us from the very beginning. And you know what, this month they have something really exciting to announce. Now there is a newest member of the MailChimp family that has joined, which is Courier Media. It's a bi-monthly magazine with really amazing um, articles, uh, some fresh ideas. So you should definitely check it out in case you're wondering uh, where you can get some more inspiration. And uh, we will share as well the link here in the comments, but then as well um, in an email in the newsletter after the talk. I'm also saying big thanks to WordPress, uh, another global sponsor of ours. And they as well have an amazing news this month. And this is that um, the Own Your Content series is back for a third season. Again, here as well, we will be sharing some uh, more information in the newsletter. So stay tuned on these, but you should definitely check it out um, and uh, get some more inspiration when it comes to creativity and design from that part as well. Now, last but not least, Basecamp is our global sport sponsor as well. And apart from their amazing management tool, they're introducing Hey, which is a new email service you may really want to try out. So think Gmail, but with an even better approach, let's say. So they're already giving out invites for you to be able to, to join and try it out. So in case you're interested, uh, either here you can see the link or just wait until we send it out uh, in the newsletter as well after the talk. I also want to say big, big, humongous, huge thanks to our local sponsors, namely, particularly Spinning Wheel, who are making sure that all our virtual sessions are actually able to happen. So thank you so much. I'm also saying thanks to Javi Design, uh, as well as Rafael, who is our uh, speaker's coach. And uh, then today we also have a special uh, partner, um, which is Mates. This is a uh, creative uh, co-working space here in Munich, and they're going to be hosting Kelty for the uh, Q&A session today. So big thanks to you as well, uh, everyone at Mates. Now, uh, last but not least, I'm saying an amazing huge thanks as well to my team, who are here every month uh, working to make sure that all those uh, sessions happen, that uh, we have inspiring talks so that we can keep delivering great value to you guys every single month. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce Kelty, Kelty McGuire, who is a clarity coach, but above all, a really inspiring and amazing person. She has been a fan of Creative Mornings forever, <laughs> for a while. Uh, she's Canadian, but has been living here in Munich for a while. And today she's going to talk about a topic of insecure. And I'm so excited. So without further ado, let's just dive in. Kilty, the stage is yours. Hello, everyone. And thank you so much for being here today. My mother texted me a few days ago 
and she said that she had received a call from the CRA. Now, the CRA is the Canadian Revenue Agency, otherwise known as the tax man. They told her that they were working on last year's taxes and that they were looking for me. Now, my heart immediately leapt into my throat and all these terrible scenarios started running through my head. First of all, I thought, I'm being audited. You know, every small business owner's nightmare comes true eventually, does it not? And then I thought I'd probably screwed something up or that maybe my accountant had screwed something up or that I hadn't properly notified them about my move to Germany. So it turns out that the government just wanted to confirm the Canadian address that they had on file. But in that brief moment, hearing that the CRA was looking for me, insecurity seized me. I felt sure that I'd made a mistake or that my bookkeeping had been done incorrectly, that my attempts to tie up loose ends in Canada had massively failed. When was the last time that you felt insecure? Maybe it was when you decided to voice an opinion that was at odds with the rest of your team at work. Or perhaps if your German is as average as mine is, you received a call from someone and you struggled to understand anything they said because of their strong Bavarian dialect. Or perhaps you decided to go for a run after having spent the last three months just hanging out on the couch. Sometimes insecurity is momentary, like the examples that I've shared. But what about the bigger insecurities that take hold of us in life? Insecurities that prevent us from living the lives we truly want to be living. That keep us from starting the business we want to start. Or maybe from moving to a new city or a new country. Insecurities that tell us we aren't smart enough to go back to school or athletic enough to run a marathon. And of course, personal insecurity is one thing, but we've also got situational and global insecurity. I think we can probably all agree that these last few months have felt very insecure. Have they not? Now, today I wanna to talk to you about what lies beyond that which is insecure and share some personal stories to illustrate this and to help inspire you. But I wanna do more than inspire you today. Today, I will share four simple yet impactful ways that you can navigate your way past insecurity. These four ideas will help you embrace action taking so that the next time you feel paralyzed by doubts, uncertainties and insecurities, you can move beyond this and go after what it is you want and create the life that you envision for yourself. Now, when I first thought about this topic, insecure, I actually question whether I would be the best person to speak to you about it. Now, that's not because I don't experience insecurities and doubts, but from an outward appearance, you might not guess that these are things that plague me, especially when we think about insecurity in terms of self-confidence. The thing is, I'm not exactly what you'd call a wallflower. So I'm often too loud. I have a tendency to speak out of turn. And in my business as a clarity coach, I choose to take on a pretty high level of visibility. So I have a tendency to be doing daily videos on Instagram and Facebook. I have my own podcast and I do everything I can to get myself out there. So although I struggle with doubts and insecurities like we all do, I taught myself from a pretty young age that despite these discomforts, I need to take action anyways. And moving beyond insecurity is something that I practice daily. I'm doing it right now and delivering this talk to you despite insecurities and doubts that I feel. Now, insecurity is more than just a lack of self-confidence. It quite literally is the opposite of secure. Insecure, unsecure. Yes, insecurity means lacking assurance and self-confidence, but it also refers to the very real uncertainties that we all face in our lives. Let me ask you this. Have you ever wanted to make a professional change? Maybe you were unhappy in your job and you wanted to pivot to a new industry, or perhaps you wanted to start or close a business. But in thinking about doing this, you face so much uncertainty and insecurity. Perhaps you've asked yourself, what's the way from point A to point B? You know, am I good enough to make this change? Do I have what it takes to be successful? Or maybe you've asked yourself questions in the face of personal adversity or challenge. How will I keep going? How will I get through this? 
We can also look at insecurity, not just from a personal standpoint, but from more of a situational and global perspective. One might say that 2020 has been very much characterized by insecurity. The coronavirus pandemic in particular has brought insecurity and uncertainty to virtually all of us in one way or another. Maybe you've asked yourself in these last few months questions like, will I or someone I know and love get sick? Perhaps even die from this virus? How long can I stay locked up at home without going crazy or wanting to kill my significant other? Will my business be able to weather this? What's gonna happen to my job? Are they gonna put me on Kurzarbeit? Am I gonna have a job at the end of this period of time? When will my kids return to school? And when will I be able to travel again? But the fact is, is that whether personal, situational or global, we all face insecurities and uncertainties. And perhaps what I found most interesting about this pandemic is the fact that it's highlighted something that has always been the case. And that is, is that future outcomes have never been guaranteed. In many ways, yes, things are insecure, but they always have been. And there's a truth in that that was a game changer for me when I came to discover it. And I'd like to share a personal story with you to help illustrate this. In 2008, my father, who was a vivacious, vibrant 56 year old, he had a black belt in karate, was a fantastic cyclist, former triathlete, specialist physician. He had an accident on his mountain bike that left him a quadriplegic. At the age of 56 years old, my dad fell off his bike and he lost all mobility from his neck down. He also was put on a ventilator, which he had to use to breathe for the rest of his life. Now, after this accident, we got 10 more years with my dad, which was both a blessing as well as one of the most heart-wrenching experiences that I've witnessed. Because I saw my dad go from somebody who had plans for his life and his future and seeing them taken away from him in an instant. And for myself, I could regard that in two ways. I could say this terrible thing has happened and life is unfair and awful things happen. And yes, those things are true. Terrible things do happen. But I could also walk away from it and say that despite the fact there is insecurity and there is uncertainty in life, I choose to move beyond that. Here's the truth that I discovered. And it's something that I knew intellectually, but I hadn't really experienced emotionally. And that is life is insecure. Life is insecure. So asking myself, what am I gonna do with this knowledge? How am I gonna to choose my, to live my life? And what am I gonna do with the time that I have now, with the ability that I have to pursue the things that I want to pursue? We all understand our time on this earth is finite. But until experiencing this firsthand in the form of a family tragedy, that was just an intellectual knowing. But the thing is knowing something intellectually and experiencing on a deep emotional level are two different things. And so for me, watching my dad's journey and seeing this hardship that he faced, it really drove home for me the fact that life is insecure. And we can allow this knowledge to entirely shatter our worldview and to leave us deciding to spend the rest of the day on or the rest of our lives on the couch watching Netflix. Rather, I've allowed it to help me act. So why do we want to move beyond insecurity? Why not just relinquish ourselves to staying put? Life can feel safer that way. Why not just curl up in a ball and watch Netflix for the rest of our days? That's available to you. But I believe we need to move beyond insecurity. And the reason why is that in order to fill our own potential, in order to grow, in order to not just cope in life, but to truly thrive, we must learn to move beyond that which is insecure. So I love hiking. It's one of my favorite pastimes. And I have to say, although I've always enjoyed nature and spending time outside, there was a time when I wasn't such a good hiker. Now, I had this belief about myself, and perhaps you can think about a belief that you hold to be true, 
where it concerns a lack of ability or an insecurity about something. So my belief was, I am not athletic. I'm not sporty. And when I met my partner, Chris, in 2009, Chris being the good German that he is, and we know without risking a stereotype that you Germans love the outdoors and you love hiking, Chris said to me, I wanna get into hiking. Let's start doing a bunch of hikes. And my initial thought was like, okay, we can go for an hour or two, but this idea of getting to do bigger, longer, more strenuous day hikes was something I was pretty reluctant about. I thought, you know, I don't think I have the physical endurance to do this. There's a pretty good chance you're gonna have to actually pull me off the mountain. And so I eased myself in super slowly. I got better quality gear. We started small, you know, I'll go for two or three hours, but there's no way you're gonna get me to do an eight hour hike. And slowly but surely, I started to build up my confidence as well as my endurance. And after a few summers, I was tackling some of Vancouver's biggest peaks. Now, a few years went by and Chris said to me one day, he said, I wanna hike the Juan de Fuca Trail. Now, the Juan de Fuca Trail is a trail on the west coast of Vancouver Island. It's 47 kilometers long and most people hike this trail in three to five days. So when Chris shared with me that he wanted to hike the Juan de Fuca, my first thought was like, hell no, I'm not doing this. Because what you need to do when you're hiking a trail like this is you've got to bring all your gear on your back, you've got your tent, you've got your stove and your pots, and you've got all of the food you need to eat for four or five days. And I'll admit at that point, I usually didn't even want to carry our day pack. So I thought, how am I supposed to carry a bag that weighs 50, 60 pounds for four days on a rugged trail? The second thought I had was, there's no way I'm letting this guy do this hike without me, because if he's going to get into doing multi-day hikes, I'm going to be a part of that. So I agreed. I said, okay, I'm going to do the Juan de Fuca trail with you. And we started preparing. We started planning. We started, you know, weighing out, measuring our food. We got better gear and we did a bit of a test drive where we did an overnight hike with our packs and camping to see what it was like. The day came when we were ready to embark on the Juan de Fuca trail. And I got to admit, I was excited, but I was also nervous. Now, the first couple days of the hike, uh, wearing a big pack like that was certainly sort of uncomfortable. I kept having to adjust the waist belt and I'm feeling the pressure on my back, but I managed okay. That said, day two was the day I was really worried about because we'd read in all of the information that we um, went through before the hike that there was, I believe it was 15 different ups and downs on this one section of the trail. And each of these inclines and declines amounted to about the Frauenkirche. If you think about the Frauenkirche here in the center of Munich. But picture climbing up and down the Frauenkirche with the most mud you've ever seen in your life, with roots, with fallen trees, with a giant pack on your back, and with wasps' nests surrounding the trails. Honest to God, nobody told me about the wasp nest before I started, but I get a pretty severe reaction when I get stung by wasps. And I managed on day two to not get one wasp sting, not two, but to get three all in one go. Luckily, my reaction is not too severe anaphylactic, but I actually ended up having a pretty swollen sore leg for about two weeks after that point. Funny enough though, I built up these 15 inclines and declines into my mind in such a big way that when we finished that day's section of the trail, I said to Chris, is that it? Do we keep going? He said, no, that, that's, that's today's leg of the trail. And I've got to say, it was hard, but I had built it up to be such a big undertaking in my mind. And to be quite honest, that was how I envisioned this entire trail. Yes, it was hard, but by that point, I was in a pretty high level of fitness and I had a ton of fun doing the hike as well. So insecurity, it's a little bit like this adventure that I've shared with you, is it not? I think sometimes we paint things in our head that they're gonna be so much more challenging, so much more trying than they actually are. And it also is the case that although it can be tough to navigate those uncertainties and insecurities, what lies on the other side can be such a reward. And isn't overcoming insecurity a little bit like my big adventure? I mean, we've got our challenges along the way, but what resides on the other side of that is such a feeling of accomplishment and enjoyment. And there's so much pleasure to be had in that. I wanna share one of my favorite quotes with you. And that is, everything you want is on the other side of fear. And 
Mr. Adair, if I may, I'd like to offer a small tweak for today's conversation. Everything you want is on the other side of insecure. Now, for the grammar police in the crowd, I realize that saying insecurity would be more grammatically correct than insecure, but this just has a better ring to it, so run with me here. If you want to create something in this world, whether that be impact or change or the kind of life that you've always envisioned, that will require you to go through the fire and face insecurity and uncertainty and doubt head on. And although that is challenging, what lies on the other side of that, I believe is everything that you and we collectively want and desire. Now, I promised that I would offer you some suggestions on how we can move past insecurity. How do we decide when a global pandemic hits that we won't just close the doors of our business? How do we not give up in the face of personal adversity? How do we do this? As mentioned, I'm going to be sharing four simple and impactful ways that you can move beyond insecurity. The first is to ask the question, what do I have to gain? And as a favor to you, because I know it can be hard to remember just four points, I've used sort of a modern day pictograph because, you know, us humans have been communicating with pictures for many, many, many years. And so I've included an emoji here. We've got the heart eyes emoji so that you can remember and keep in mind, what do I have to gain? And more specifically, is what I have to gain greater than what I might lose? I think a lot of us focus on loss, i.e. all the things that can go wrong. You know, for example, if we think about wanting to get a job, we think about the fact that we may flop the interview. If we think about wanting to start a business, we think about all the money we might lose. And my suggestion is for you to flip that around. If we return to my hiking example with the Juan de Fuca Trail, for me, what I had to gain was the opportunity to show myself I could do something I didn't believe I could do. I stood to gain the chance to have an amazing outdoor experience in wilderness that I would never otherwise get to experience. I stood to gain increased fitness. I can tell you, I felt pretty fit and on top of the world once I finished that hike. So let's say you wanna start your own business. What do you stand to gain by doing that? Is it the chance for you to serve a community that you've always wanted to connect with? Does it mean potential financial freedom for you and your family? I want you to think about something right now that you have doubt or insecurity and uncertainty about, and to ask yourself, what will I gain by moving beyond this? What's another way that we can move beyond insecurity? I have a good friend named Regan. She is one of my good hiking friends because I've got hiking friends now. And I was telling Regan about this talk that I would be doing on the subject of insecurity and moving beyond what is insecure. Now, Regan shared something with me, which is a few years ago when she decided to do a large section of the Camino in Spain, she said, you know, if somebody would have said to me out of the blue, you need to walk 900 kilometers, I would have thought there is no way that I could ever do that. But by starting with just a single step, it suddenly became not so hard. So my second suggestion for you in terms of how you can move beyond insecurity is start with a single step. If there's something that you're currently feeling insecure about, but that you want for yourself, if for example, you wanna meet the love of your life, start by creating an online dating profile. Perhaps you have some insecurity around your public speaking skills. You can look at signing up for an online course, or maybe you decide you want to run a marathon, but you've hardly gone for a run in your life. Start by going out for just 10 or 15 minutes. Where do we begin when we feel insecurity? We need to begin with a single step. And then we will gain momentum and we will gain traction from there with each step forward. The third way for you to move beyond insecurity is to ask yourself, who is the person that I want to be? And how would they show up in this situation? 
Specifically, what sort of virtues do you want to embody? Is it resilience? Is it courage? Is it creativity? When coronavirus first hit Munich, middle of March, when things started really heating up around here, as a small business owner, initially, I had a bit of a freak out. I thought, what's gonna happen to my customers? Will anybody ever have their focus put on anything aside from this pandemic ever again? Will people have money to spend to work with me? And so I had all of these insecurities and disaster scenarios playing through my mind. But after a couple of days of feeling quite worried and feeling sorry for myself, I stopped and I asked myself, how would the person I want to be respond to the situation? And the answer I came up with is that this person would respond with resilience. This person would respond in a way that helps support others in their own insecurities rather than just focusing in on their own problems. And more importantly, this person would not give up in the face of insecurity. So the next time you're feeling insecure, ask yourself, how would the person I want to be show up in this situation? The fourth and final way that you can move beyond insecurity is to engage and connect with others. In my coaching business, I just finished my first small group coaching program. And one of the things that was really beautiful that came out of that program is the fact that all of the participants in this group were so relieved to know that other people are struggling with the same types of challenges in their businesses that they are. I think when we feel insecure, that can be a really alienating, lonely thing. We often think that we are the only people that feel this way. But when we recognize that there are other people who have gone through and are going through whatever it is that we are overtaking, that can bring us some consolation. And so I encourage you, connect with other people. And don't just do it for your own well-being, but think about how can I support and serve others who are also facing these kinds of insecurities and doubts. Support each other. Come together in communities like this one. And I think that when we can start to speak more openly about the insecurities that we all face, then we can agree and come up with solutions to move forward together. Moving beyond what is insecure does not mean waiting for insecurity and uncertainty to disappear. And it also doesn't mean waiting for courage to magically appear. Just like my hiking adventure on the Juan de Fuca Trail illustrated, Insecurity asks us to act. It asks us to hold in our mind's eye what it is we want to create in this world and in our lives by posing the question, what do I stand to gain? Insecurity asks us to take a single step, to act in spite of doubt and insecurity and uncertainty. Insecurity asks us to step into the person we want to be and to ask, who is the person I want to be? And how would they show up in this situation? And lastly, insecurity asks us to do this in connection with and in support of others. The next time that you find yourself paralyzed by insecurity, I want you to remember everything you want is on the other side of insecure. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I look forward to chatting with you soon in the Q&A. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right, I'm going to hop over to the chat and see if we have some questions in there. Um, ask away. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. OK, so I'm just going to make sure I'm starting at the beginning here so I don't miss anything. Uh, Katya, hello, Katya. So Katja says, thanks for those insights. I have a question. Do you think insecurity is a matter of character or state of mind? Thanks. Um, funny you should ask that, Katja, because this morning I thought, you know, how much of this is um, perhaps just, you know, the, the environment that I had in my household, what was modeled to me with my uh, family, you know, is it, is kind of that nature and nurture question. So where does security come from? Um, and you know, I think it's probably a mix of both. I think just like anything in life, it's hard for us to really pinpoint 
you know, where does the character trait of being secure or insecure come from? Um, I certainly think, you know, if we look at our upbringings or we look at our experiences that we had when we were young, that's probably going to shape people and their viewpoints quite a bit. Um, and I was very supported in what I did. Fortunately, my, you know, my parents were very supportive and always encouraged me. Um, so, you know, I'd be interested to hear from people who find themselves to be um, somebody who, you know, they, they are able to navigate and move beyond insecurity, um, but maybe they didn't have that kind of environment growing up. Um, you know, how they were able to tackle it. Um, that said, you know, our, our minds are powerful. They're certainly malleable. And so I do think if you are someone who is struggling with insecurity, that there are ways and means of working beyond that. Um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, reading books, working with a coach, um, you know, just learning to take action in spite of feeling insecure. Um, I do think it's something that can be trained and taught. Uh, and I think it's a muscle just like anything else. So for myself, I find you know, the, the more that I step into insecurity, the more that I push myself to do things that I am afraid of, the more I am becoming more adept at moving beyond and through that. Um, I guess I, you know, I'm getting more comfortable with discomfort. So uh, I'm not sure if that answers your question. And like I say, I don't necessarily have the definitive answers on that, but it's a super good question. And again, I think it's probably a mix of you know, all of the above how we've been raised, the experiences that we've had in our life, you know, inherent traits that we have genetically, um, and then of course, you know, just the experiences we've gone through. All right, Balint, um, how can the wish for gain, um, how can the wish for gain can be stronger than having fears to start? Um, so I, I think just to make sure I understand the question, it's making, you know, how, how can we have that, what we have to gain outweigh the fears we have, because fears can also be really strong. Um, you know, and I think it is just really painting like a big, bold vision and thinking beyond what we even think is possible for ourselves, um, you know, constantly bringing ourselves back to that. So, you know, for example, being asked to do this talk, um, there was quite a large part of me that thought, you know, I've not really done anything like this before. Um, am I going to be compelling to listen to? Will I screw this up? I'm nervous. I had all these thoughts, but for me, it was really fixating on, okay, you know, if I do this talk, I have a chance to connect with new people. I have a chance to share ideas. I have a chance to push myself to do something I didn't think was possible. So um, I try and just, you know, very intentionally keep that vision in the front of my mind. Um, and acknowledge the other side of things, but not allow it to rule the situation. Um, so, you know, it, it is, I think, a choice. And um, again, based on what I shared in the talk, I think just starting to take those small steps and really, um, you know, focusing in on that big picture is, is the best way to move forward. Okay. Um, Andrea says, where can we see your talk again? Is it possible? Hello, Andrea. And, and Zach, I didn't mean to jump over you. I'll move back to you, Zach. Um, I believe it will be on the uh, Creative Mornings YouTube channel, um, Vimeo, um, but I know there will be a chance. So if you keep your eyes posted on both Creative Mornings Munich as well as on my own social channels, we'll definitely be sharing that soon. So if you missed it uh, or you want to catch it again, you can certainly do that. All right. And Zach says, how do we continue to attempt to fulfill our goals when we failed at them multiple times? Great question. Um, <laughs> you know, resilience is a character trait that again, I think we have to like hone and finesse. Um, I think part of it is reframing how we see failure and how we see success. So I had a business prior to becoming a coach and that was as a jewelry designer and when I decided to close that business, there were a lot of aspects of that that I actually regarded as failures. You know, I didn't feel like I'd grown the business as big as I'd wanted to. I didn't feel like I had, um, you know, found the level of financial success that I also had hoped to. And for me, again, it was that really intentional choice of saying, what are other measures of success and what have I done well? and to look at you know, the stores that I had my products in and the customers that I've gained and the growth I had seen and how much knowledge I had acquired over the course of these few years I had the business. Um, I think we need to get better at acknowledging when we do take steps forward because even if we don't feel like we've learned 
anything, even if we don't feel like we've gained anything, even if we think we haven't progressed, I think almost in all scenarios we have, even if it's simply a matter of learning what we would do different next time. So, um, you know, part of it's just that tenacity of saying like, I'm, if there's something I really want, I'm not going to settle for not getting it. And again, to like set up little wins along the way to be able to say, you know, the measure of my success is not just a matter of having, you know, a thriving business on paper or not just, you know, getting that job that I want, but it's also in terms of the growth we've experienced as people, the knowledge we've acquired and so forth. Okay. Um, and Andrea says we will send a newsletter when the video is posted on our website. Okay, and we have a question from Jessica and um, this looks like our last question. So if there's any more questions, just pop them in the comments now. Otherwise we're gonna be, oh, there's another question from Andrea, okay. Um, now Jessica says, how do you suggest people stay motivated through insecurity? Um, you know, I think first of all, Jessica, and, and thank you for that. Um, I think partly it's acknowledging the fact that we're not always going to feel motivated. And just like in life, we're not always going to feel on top of our game. We're not always going to feel positive. There's going to be low periods just to recognize like sort of the this too shall pass attitude. And sometimes we're not going to feel as motivated. Sometimes we are going to have weeks or months where we're not as productive. And so I think, you know, partly it's accepting that. I think partly it is, again, maybe setting like smaller, sort of um you know goals or milestones for yourself that when you're in a period of you know feeling demotivated um you know I, I know a lot of business owners over these last few months have been feeling really challenged by the circumstances it might be you know setting just one or two key things that you want to get done in a given day you know maybe one big milestone for the week and then something small for your day because again if we can set ourselves up instead of saying you know there's a hundred things I, sh I should or want to or need to get done and not accomplishing those if we can just focus on a couple of key things, that's going to allow us then to feel like, okay, yes, I've done something. I am a good person. You know, I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm, I'm a, you know, successful in my business, my job. Um, the other thing too is I, I find it helpful, like when I've done a task, not just to like have a to-do list where I check it off, but like to really acknowledge and recognize the steps you are taking because I think sometimes we tend to neglect that, especially if we're not feeling um, super good internally. Okay, and we've got one more question here from Andrea. And Andrea says, um, why is it you feel more confident, secure, and able to do much more in your home country than when you live abroad? In this case, Germany. I started to face insecurity here and not in my past. Um, you know, that's a good question. I think it's going to be personal for everybody. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a question for you to ask yourself and maybe, you know, just to take a journal and a piece of paper, like what specifically about this does make me feel insecure? Or to flip it around, you might ask, what makes me feel secure? Is it having people I know who I understand and recognize support me? Is it feeling comfortable in my surroundings? Um, and, you know, if those are the things that make you feel secure, then we can say, well, you know, I don't know anybody here or I know less people. Um, I don't feel as comfortable in my surroundings because it's totally foreign to me. Um, I know for me, when I moved here, the language barrier was really interesting because although I do speak a fair bit of German, um, you know, getting thrown into a city, a culture where <laughs> that the go-to language is German, um, I didn't feel as confident as I normally do. And social norms are also a bit different here. So for me as somebody who's quite confident, you know, outspoken, I walk into a business, I want to talk to the person who's making my coffee. And that's not always kind of like the accepted way of being here. Or it's not, I shouldn't say it's not accepted, it's just not expected. You know, people don't expect you to say, hey, how's your day going? Um, that did put me into a state of feeling not quite as confident. Um, and so I think over time, I've just had to say, you know, this is who I am. I need to feel good about myself in and of myself, regardless of what circumstances say or what other people say um, but you know I think it's totally normal Andrea and again look at what makes me feel secure what makes me feel confident to recognize that that may not be existing in your current scenario here and then the next step is how can I cultivate that how can I build that community how can I you know build that confidence in new ways in my new city Okay, amazing. Thank you so much for the questions, all of you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, yes, thank you, Creative Mornings. Um, I, I appreciate your note there. <laughs> um, really appreciate you guys tuning in. So look forward to connecting with you all. 
Thank you for tuning in. I wish you a beautiful weekend and uh, stay tuned for next month's Creative Mornings Talk.